Let's focus on digital adoption, which has surged in the wake of the COVID pandemic, no more so than in Singapore, where this global financial centre is pushing forward. In line with the Cybos 2021 theme of recharging global finance, digital acceleration, technological innovation and greater diversity and sustainability are all playing key roles in the city-state's recovery. Well, to take a measure of Singapore as a financial hub at the moment and what the future holds for it, we're joined by Sapnendu Mahanti, the Chief Fintech Officer at the Monetary Authority of Singapore and Lobun Chai, the CEO of the Singapore Exchange. Welcome to Cybos TV. OK, the first question for you is, how has COVID-19 affected the financial services industry and what have MAS's and SGX's priorities been? And let's start with you, Sapnendu. Hi, uh, good to uh, be part of the Cyber Show. And uh, well, the, your question is quite uh, pertinent here because we have, I think, reasonably speaking, we have uh, dealt with this crisis uh, quite reasonably well. Uh, as, I, uh, uh, as any other industry, uh, nobody anticipated this crisis. And uh, we were in quite a position of strength before we entered to the crisis. So. Uh, so as we went through this crisis, we, we focused on a few things, uh, especially dealing with small businesses, uh, especially ensuring that the cash flow is uh, managed for this business as well. Uh, we ensured that our regular intervention in terms of supervisory, regulatory support, uh, wherever we, we can to make the process of accessing finance easier for the small businesses, especially during the crisis. Uh, one thing worked for Singapore is the use of digital platforms. Just before the crisis, we invested heavily on upgrading our financial infrastructure, our digital infrastructure, our payment infrastructure, our other uh, digital adoption by the businesses was quite good. So all this really helped uh, uh, the industry to deal with the crisis, able to carry on the businesses with all the limitation the pandemic uh, uh, came with. And uh, so we are, we are okay, and we are coming out of the crisis with a stronger uh, outcome. Uh, our digital adoption has been at a record high. Uh, businesses, individuals have adopted electronic payments as, as, a, as a norm of their life. And in fact, uh, people now don't do anything outside digital payment. And that's a huge positive uh, takeaway for the crisis to have enabled all of us to adopt these tools uh, as part of our doing businesses. So uh, the industry broadly has done exceedingly well against the challenges it has to, uh, it has to deal, deal, deal with. Right, Wunchai? Well, uh, at the uh, Singapore Exchange, we were focused on a few fronts. First and foremost was to keep the markets uh, open uh, with over 90% of our staff working from home. We were able to do that, as uh, Spandu mentioned, uh, the Singapore ecosystem has uh, invested prior to this in uh, digital tools. We were able to, at very short notice, really uh, have our colleagues working from home, keeping the markets uh, open, but more importantly, working with uh, the other participants in the overall ecosystem, where they also have to have a large part of their staff working from home. We are also very focused on uh, helping and working with our companies in terms of their financial reporting and also conducting of their uh, annual general meeting and also extending where possible in terms of mandates for them to continue to seek capital from uh, the markets uh, as the uh, pandemic uh, rolled on. And uh, in order that, uh, looking back, the ability to work with partners, including uh, our regulator, in many of those uh, industry practices, thinking, planning, and rehearsing for a pandemic really come to the fore when it actually happened. And Sopnandu, how can economies around build back better? Um, and how can we emerge stronger from this pandemic? Well, I'm going to anchor on that same uh, digital transformation uh, journey because one thing we understood during pandemic that the, the, the future construct of economies will be around a digital uh, format and what you call as a digital economy. And uh, in Singapore, 
we have been championing something called foundational digital infrastructure, which means there are four or five things you got to have on which economists are going to ride as they build the future construct of digital economy. And the four uh, elements are a strong, trusted uh, digital identity system, whether it's individual or corporate, because we are all going to interact with each other remotely, and we need to trust our digital avatar of ourselves in this, in this uh, digital uh, construct. The second piece is the data associated with this digital ID, because as we are going to deal with uh, digital transaction, interaction with information, we could ensure that the data which is built around an identity is trusted. So the second element uh, which uh, we believe will be very critical uh, for the future economy is have a trusted data exchange. So that all the data we deal with are from a trusted sources, well-governed, and they're managed with a lot of thoughtful, uh, uh, balanced policies around it, protecting consumer price, uh, privacies and other necessary uh, uh, protections you need to have when you use this data. The third element is a highly interoperable payment system because this is critical. We are able to pay each other digitally uh, uh, in, a, in the most efficient way, in the most, uh, uh, I would say, cost-effective way. In fact, in Singapore, we can pay each other in three clicks just knowing each other mobile phone number at zero cost. I think that, and, and, and these are highly interoperable payment system. They interact with different apps, different banking account systems, different merchant payment system. Fourth element is a citizen-centric consent system because as consumers, businesses interact in a digital world, they must have a power to consent their data being shared with third party because that will bring trust uh, to the economy where we are dealing remotely with each other. So having such four foundational infrastructure will be a key to success for countries building back their, their economy out of crisis. And Vin Chai, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I, I think uh, at, the, at the core of it is really trust, partnership, and consistency. At the country level, uh, Singapore kept our borders uh, open. We kept supply chain uh, open. Goods that were in transit into Singapore were able to get to their final destination, no matter where uh, it was uh, going to, uh, to get to. And at the financial markets and the exchange level, the ability for us to consistently be transparent and working with our participants in the ecosystem in the midst of very volatile market conditions to be able to assure participants what comes next in terms of uh, clearing fund requirements, in terms of how participants should be engaging the marketplace, making their services available, has all helped the markets to continue to function in the manner that it should. And in all of that, our ability to be inclusive and uh, working with like-minded uh, market infrastructure partners to continue to keep the markets open and flowing, I think, has allowed uh, a situation uh, of where we are today. And uh, coming over to yourself, Sapnendu, um, what do you think is the future for financial services? Well, that's a very interesting question because uh, what I'm going to paint to the future financial services is not what you see today. Uh, we in MAS uh, did a study uh, on, on what, what will be the future of financial services. Well, it was a, uh, this thick document, but I'm not going to spend uh, walk, walking you through the whole document. Let, and there are only three big macro trend uh, which we saw as in our own analysis of what the future look like. And it is interestingly a uh, very common theme which all of us now deal with is something called embedded finance. That's one. So future is going to be designed in which financial services are not going to be operating within the boundaries of their digital platform or within the boundaries of their branches. They're going to come out of that and get embedded in the end point where people digitally interact, whether they're dealing with a travel portal, whether they're dealing with an e-commerce site, whatever financial services they need will be fulfilled at the end point 
where the consumers transact. So that's the embedded finance piece. Or uh, more, more futuristic, the devices can become your next uh, endpoint where financial services are being offered to. The second big trend is what you call as decentralized finance, which kind of further uh, uh, away from the construct you see today. So finance will no, no more be managed and governed through a trusted uh, central party whether, it, whether uh, or intermediaries in the way we see today. It will be decentralized. Uh, the business models being imagined within this decentralized finance is, 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 is something which will be a sh big shift, cultural shift, from, from all of us where, where we have operated, operated today. For example, if you go to a bank, you open a, you, you, you open a checking account, what really happens is the banks create a ledger, within the ledger, open a checking account for you. It's not decentralized finance. Actually, the, it's all the things are happening at the bank's uh, system. The future will be that the same product will be actually running in your mobile phone in a decentralized way. So you don't have to go to a website or, a, or an entity to do your services. You are in charge of your product and you are talking to different websites. So the decentralized finance. And the third element is green finance because we are, we are making a shift uh, from brown assets to green assets. Sustainability is, an, is, a, is, is a need of the hour and there will be a huge switch from the current financial assets looking to uh, shift themselves to the green assets. So the green finance will be a key part to the future of financial services. And uh, Bhutchai, well, I would say that, yeah, yeah it indeed, uh, it, indeed a very good question. And I share uh, the uh, three points that uh, Sapandu has uh, mentioned. Uh, but I think what is also important in, in the uh, future of the uh, capital markets will be one where it will be round the clock, easy to uh, access, it will be uh, borderless. And then, uh, importantly, how finance, uh, as Pandu mentioned, is really embedded into one's everyday life. And along with that, as a market infrastructure, as an exchange, uh, as the Singapore uh, exchange, it is also incumbent upon us to really bring our ecosystem along to embrace sustainability in the form of whether that's green finance, and for us as a regulator, as a company, uh, and uh, as a business, we will bring our issuers along with us. We will have a platform where investors can express their preference, not only just in green investments, but in transition, in helping companies to move from brown to green. And I think that's clearly very exciting uh, as you uh, asked us about the future. Now, both MAS and SGX have spoke about ESG as an important theme, and you've touched on sustainability already. How, what role do you see Singapore playing in that? Sopnandu? Uh, well, Singapore is already playing a huge role in this space. Uh, uh, we account for 40% of the investment in, which went into this uh, green finance space. And we are seeing a huge uh, growth in the numbers. Uh, 20, uh, the 2018 was close to $3.8 billion. This year, uh, this is now 2020, the numbers are $14 billion. You can see the growth of the green finance in this space. But if you want to break it down to four, four concrete areas where we are playing a, a significant role, first is coming, the industry will work together to start defining a common taxonomy. That's the important language in which we are going to exchange uh, information and, and base our judgment. The taxonomy of, of the green has to be now standardized. That's a big focus for uh, area for us. The second area will be facilitating different products which supports green financing. So that's the second uh, piece of focus area. A third, you need a lot of technology because Green finance relies on uh, ability to measure the impact. And when you are financing uh, a particular project uh, uh, on, under a green outcome, you got to have a whole set of technology, which we call now as the Web 3.0 technology, which in, means a lot of decentralized technology. We can monitor things, assets being deployed under green KPIs uh, in remotely, a lot of IoT devices, data, uh, data can be monitored remotely. As a whole set of uh, new industry we're going to come, we call it green fintech, and they're going to power 
lot of the green finance projects, especially for monitoring, measuring, and mobilizing green finance. And the fourth element would be around building the knowledge capacity because capacity building is a key. We've got to build a lot of uh, capacity within the industry, within the financial sector, uh, within the ecosystem, so that there's a common understanding as you progress to this transition from brown to green assets. Mm. And Bunchai, what are your thoughts on that? Well, indeed, Singapore will play uh, an important and uh, critical role uh, in sustainability uh, in the region. Uh, at the uh, financial uh, market ecosystem, there are many roles that the uh, SGX and participants uh, can play. So, uh, for one, at uh, SGX, we are the first Asian exchange uh, to have a uh, to sign up for a one and a half degrees aligned science-based target uh, emission reduction. At the same time, we are part of the uh, services uh, financial services provider for the net zero uh, alliance. But I think more importantly, uh, we have also partnered up with uh, DBS, uh, the Marseille Center Charter, to form Climate Impact Exchange, CIX, that will offer very high quality carbon credits to organizations who need to have offsets for very hard to abate carbon uh, emissions. And also, along with that, helping uh, investors to uh, seek data that could be uh, helpful in their investment uh, decision. So with uh, one of our partners, uh, NASDAQ, uh, and also the creation of a market, we'll make available data around the uh, sustainability investing space uh, in uh, fixed income securities. Excellent. And uh, Sopnando, how is the MAS preparing the Singapore economy and businesses for the future? Well, uh, this is a question um, broadly, uh, I guess, uh, uh, referring to how do we get our economy and our businesses in the same line of adopting technology? Because it is undoubtedly going to be a technology-driven construct. And... Uh, the best way to deal with that is to first focus on how to accelerate our own adoption of technologies uh, in our, uh, in, in, within the businesses, uh, within the country, so that that piece gets, uh, gets uh, strengthened. And the second piece I would think is talent, because uh, as, you're getting prepared, as you're preparing for this future economy, the kind of talent you need will dramatically shift. It, and, and we got to ensure that we have the right talent pool in Singapore who are ready to build, operate, and consume this new digital economy. And the third piece I would say that uh, we got to start thinking about connecting our systems, our processes to world at large, to different countries so that we start, because ultimately the, the, the Singapore relies on global trade flows. And we got to ensure that our systems are interoperable to the global systems. Uh, we make effort to connect our payment systems, uh, our data systems, whatever the future construct would look like, whether it's a decentralized finance or embedded finance, able to be able to cross the jurisdictions and, and cross to different jurisdictions and able to connect the systems will be key to ensure the future is, uh, is taken care uh, as it evolves so quickly uh, with this new kind of technology-driven uh, economic uh, construct. And uh, Boon Chai, how is the SGX uh, future-proofing businesses? So, so about to talk about uh, partnership and uh, connecting to the rest of the world, I shared it. I think uh, making SGX the best in class as a partner, I think it's uh, critical, it's important. Uh, we already are doing that. Our uh, over 30 years uh, partnership with the uh, Chicago Mercantile Exchange CME in terms of the mutual offset that actually allows participants to trade and access Asian markets on either exchange and yet have their positions be hot on either exchange really creates the efficiency for the uh, participants uh, in the uh, marketplace. And also technology clearly is uh, key, is important. 
And in there, uh, I think the uh, development of uh, DLT, uh, distributed ledger technology, uh, is a key development that I think the in industry is seeing. We ourselves are embracing and uh, adopting that. We have now uh, the ability through our platform in uh, Market Note, a joint venture with the market that will now allow issuers to uh, digitally create and borrow in the fixed income market with a more efficient and shorter end-to-end -end processes. And along uh, with that, clearly, uh, is talent. And in there, we are also embracing the uh, tokenization of uh, securities in the capital markets in the years ahead. Now, Sopnandu, how does MAS create a competitive financial center and facilitate innovation? Well, this is a continuous process for us. I think we don't really, uh, we don't really think that uh, we got to facilitate innovation because it's uh, almost part of our DNA uh, quality. And we think about uh, innovation in, in perhaps in, if I can do in three buckets. Uh, one is how do you build a conducive regulatory environment which allows new ideas, new business models to be deployed, tested, experimented, and also productionalized out of Singapore. And you would know that Singapore uh, is a big proponent of regulatory sandbox. So we have created that infrastructure which allows new ideas to take uh, uh, shape and, and, and grow out of Singapore. That's one bucket. The second bucket is how do we encourage the startup industry to come to the sector and start uh, already doing it uh, to take every pieces of business of financial services, unbundle them, make a far more efficient and uh, process than it is today, which is which has been happening in Singapore for the last five years. We have seen a remarkable growth of startup industry from we are in low 20s. Now we are more than 1,000 plus startups in Singapore focusing on financial sector. Uh, just to give a number, in 2014, 2014, the total, uh, the cumulative investment in the startup sector in Singapore was close to $20 million only. This year, three quarters into the year, the total investment is close to $2 billion in six years. Clearly shows that the, industry, the startup industry has grown and powering the new, the new competitive financial center out of Singapore. That's the second bucket. And the third bucket is how do we build a talent pool and how do we connect to countries or, uh, who, with whom we do uh, businesses and, and, we, and we engage. So building those talent pool, building those connections, building the trust, uh, especially in the digital construct, const digital construct becomes a critical part of our competitive advantage uh, if we want to think that way. And Bunchoy, how does SGX encourage innovation in capital markets? Technology is clearly a, a key part of that, uh, but let me uh, move beyond the uh, technology bit in terms of uh, what is being uh, critical also in uh, financial markets uh, innovation. So first is really connectivity. We uh, recently announced a uh, depository receipt linkage with the uh, stock exchange of Thailand, and uh, that is also the agreed at the uh, regulator to regulator uh, level. What that will allow is for uh, investors in either market to trade securities across borders seamlessly. And I think that's important uh, in a borderless world that we have now seen uh, as we all went through uh, the pandemic with many things going online uh, and uh, digitally. Secondly, I think uh, innovation will also come uh, in the form of thinking about different pools of liquidity. Today, uh, just using an example, and I think that part of what is close to Cybos too in terms of payments, foreign exchange, uh, we, I think, artificially bucket liquidity differently. Whether that's exchange traded, whether that's retail, uh, and uh, whether that is uh, over the counter electronically, they're all trading and exchanging currencies. If one could innovatively pull this liquidity together and uh, offer that seamlessly round the clock 
which does happen now for the consumers, even on weekend, I think that uh, will create far more efficiency and lower costs for the consumer. And then the last but not least, I think in the, you asked earlier, in the financial markets or capital markets uh, of the future, it's no longer uh, just trading into any centralized uh, marketplace. I think one has to uh, be thinking and planning for decentralized marketplaces as uh, uh, Sopandu talked about earlier. Okay, so as we just heard there, technology has clearly enabled businesses and services to be borderless. Uh, Sopnendu, what more do you hope to see in terms of cross-border activity? Well, uh, let me take an example here. Uh, I, I spoke about how Singapore uh, invested and, uh, and, and deployed a very advanced payment system, uh, where, which is called PayNow. Uh, what we did uh, two years back, we told, okay, we have a highly efficient payment system. Let's experiment and start connecting our system to uh, another jurisdiction's payment system. And uh, luckily for us, Thailand was building a similar system, which is a proxy-based system called PromPay, where people can pay each other by just uh, knowing their respective mobile phone number. So can we connect our system from Singapore to Thailand? We have PayNow, they have PromPay. Let's, can they talk to each other and move money instantly? Just to give a context that before, and, and okay, we, we took two years, we understood how to connect, and we connected this year. Before the connection, the, there are a couple of things which is happening in Singapore. For every $100 you send uh, to Thailand from here, uh, it used to cost us somewhere between uh, $12 to $15. After the connection, the cost went down to $3. Immediately, a close to $10 was just a save which went directly to immigrant workers who were sending back money back home. That's one. Second, the money got now remitted instantly, as against a couple of hours, few hours, or sometimes more than a day, when somebody has to remit money from Singapore to Thailand. And the third to me, perhaps the most impactful change when we did this connection is the size of the transaction. Uh, migrant workers tend to wait for a couple of weeks with their sizable, sizable amount of money so that the cost of transfer is, 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 uh, is taken care. Now that size has gone down to $300 only, which means they're sending the more frequently money back home, able to address situation back home faster, and it costs them $3 per every $100 transfer. So it has put a real social impact on people, especially during pandemic, able to send money back home in a timely way. Why I'm explaining all this thing? Because this is key to the success of the future economy. People should be able to connect each other and able to digitally serve each other's need and able to make things efficient. And it's not limited to payments. It also, also, we can talk about businesses. Another example out of Singapore, we last year a product called uh, 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 Proxterra. What is Proxterra? It is a marketplace where small businesses who tend to not do well in, when it comes to cross-border businesses can now go and participate in this platform, can find the matching bias and supplier. And not only they find the matching bias and supplier, they also can tap into a whole suite of digital services from logistic to finance to legal services, all available to them in a, in a more elegant, efficient way. So these businesses can now start trading cross-border. Actually, a, Third a example perfect be... way to wrap up because we are, I'm so sorry, we are actually out of time, but it's clear the future is bright for Singapore. So thank you so much, Sapnendu and Boon Chai, for joining us okay. here on Cybos TV. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.